And more facts have emerged of the ongoing probe of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, by the House of Representatives Committee on Niger Delta Affairs in Abuja. The committee is probing an alleged misappropriation of about 80 0.5 billion naira belonging to the commission by the interim management committee between October 2019 to May 2020. One of the petitioners, Kolawole Johnson, told lawmakers that the NDDC has been a cesspit of corruption with officials diverting billions of naira into private pockets via contract racketeering and obnoxious initiatives. I want to assure you that the investigative hearing as we said on day one, it's not a witch hunt exercise. It's specifically designed to be able to give birth to a new Niger Delta of our dreams. The Niger Delta that will bring aspiration and hope, succor and solace to the yearnings of the great people of the Niger Delta. We must do justice to the history of our hero's past. So many of our leaders sacrificed their past in order to secure our today. History is on us, to, for us to put in all our best today in order to secure the future of generations yet unborn. First, was beyond the approval limit of the management. Secondly, the director of project said on air that they were waiting for the presidential approval. That was when he was on air on the 26th of April, and that approval came on the 38th of April which means that this contract were awarded and paid for without approval. Osmos have later got additional payment uh, on the 21st of, uh, sorry, on the 4th of uh, May, he got additional 1.646 billion, uh, uh, billion naira, 4th of May. Then on the 21st of May, he got additional 2.269 uh, billion naira. If you put these figures together, it comes to 4.5539697140 billion. This is sad because people die in that area daily. The same water they are excreting, a lot of them drink from it. And so people sit in some office, pop it and drink, and waste the money of the people. Yes, I challenge the party because he has told the government in Nigeria that. Everybody, including members of the National Assembly, are afraid and they are the ones pushing me to say that they are afraid of the forensic or the going on. I challenge him to do any of these nine forensic auditors that have been approved by the Federal Executive Council. He said on television that um, he has set down his men. Even last week, he has set down his men. That was the memo. Uh, was supposed to be for the procurement of the um, forensic auditor. So if you have not gotten your paper, you have not written to, to the, uh, you have not appointed them officially, where then is the forensic audit going? Why are we as a country being deceived? I challenge him to be one of these imams who go on and go, to come and say that they are indeed carrying out the forensic and this is the greatest scam in this country. All the staff have in their world or in their local government project. If every staff of NDDC takes up the project in their local government, ensures that they are well done, they will not have this issue. Thirdly, the INC. In my experience, which I want to talk about, for the first time in the history of NDDC, no palliatives were given. I did not give out this much palliatives. I was under pressure to bring 10 billion, 1 billion per state. I refused. The youth were calling me, Madam, things are very difficult. Things are very difficult. I said, the day I give you people this money, you know I have started collecting your money. The youth went back to the community to walk through the CDC. When I was MDC, Nobody saw any youth hanging outside the gate of NDD. No youth stayed outside the gate. Because we were trying to ensure that the youth go back to the world. We are now joined by Professor Chris Wokobia, a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. 
It's my pleasure to be here. You're welcome. Is the president right by, you know, shortly taking the probe from the National Assembly, asking investigating ag agencies to speedily coordinate the investigation of the NDDC uh, corruption allegations? No, I don't think I don't think that the the question should be if he if he can take over the responsibility softly. I think that the executive can do their own investigation, but the law primarily gives the right to oversight functions on the National Assembly. So I, I think that the House of Representatives, and if you like, if the Senate wants to do the same thing, have the, has the right under the law to investigate what is happening in the NDDC. Uh, the president can as well set up uh, a panel to investigate what is happening, but he cannot stop. Uh, I think that's the mix up there. He cannot stop the National Assembly from doing what it's doing. It's, that's what the law uh, uh, empowers the National Assembly to do. Okay, and, and, and also since the chairman of the House Committee, Tunji Ojo, is accused of being an interested party, is there no merit in the action of the NDDC, uh, Professor Ponday, in refusing to testify before the panel? Do you think he has, you know, um, some leverage there? And walking out on the panel was the wrong thing to do. If, uh, if they have uh, sufficient bias against uh, the neutrality, if you like, of the chairman of the panel, uh, they should write the National Assembly to request for another panel to be constituted or composed for the purposes of investigating the actions and and, and the messy uh, details from the NDDC. So I, I think that what point they should have done was to say, uh, we're not comfortable with this panel. We'll be ready to uh, appear before a neutral panel whenever a neutral pan uh, another panel is constituted, rather than just walk out on the on the National Assembly or the House of Representatives. But let me say clearly that uh, the, the degree of mess and the degree of uh, rot that we have witnessed uh, with respect to the NDDC before now and presently uh, is benumbing, befuddling and bewildering. I, I think that the time has come for us to side with every organ of government that is looking into uh, the rot at the level of the NDDC. So I, 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 my sympathies and my support are with the National Assembly. And if the president wants to do something substantial with respect to clean, cleansing the audience table, cleansing the NDDC, I will support it. But you know, the president cannot stop the National Assembly from investigating uh, into uh, investigating the details of uh, the mess that the NDDC has become. And also, do you think the NDDC, you know, maybe it's high time that it is scrapped and the funds be, you know, routed through their state allocation since many, you know, have described it as a cesspool of corruption? For us who have consistently advocated the need for a national conference where issues about the restructuring of our country will be debated and resolved, uh, we are not excited about these interventionist agencies. You hear about the Northeast Development Agency, you hear about the Southeast Development Agency. That's not what you need in a federal structure. And we have repeatedly said that restructuring may just be the silver bullet that we need to fix this country. And I say this advisedly. If you create bodies like the NDDC and you call them interventionist bodies, remember when we were growing up, it was said that everybody's property is nobody's property. All over the world, nations in in federalisms, people are allowed to exploit and explore their resources for progress and pay some kind of tax or emolument.